the famous haircut thing um the very famous video of, of richie talking about the haircut and and having you locked in a room and you, sn- you snuck out to go and get your haircut yeah. and then he was he was raging with you and that's one of the reasons he fired you and all this sort of stuff and i know you've rubbished it over the years but can you tell us a little bit more about that famous story yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> he's embellished that story a bit. He's adding to it every time I hear. But I, I'm surprised that story is still travelling along all, after all these years. <laughs> what actually happened was we were in, I can't remember what, maybe in Scotland, I think, actually. And um, I was with my ex-wife, and uh, my hair was getting like this, like it is now. I've been off the road for so long. We go back on the road in, in a month. But I didn't have my hair cut when I was off the road, you know. And you could see, but I fucking... Holy cell back there. Anyway, so I was walking around the city with her. I think it was Edinburgh. And um, my hair wasn't quite as long as this. And I said to her, I said, I'm going to get a haircut while you go and uh, shop, you know. So I went to get a haircut. And that was it. That's all That's all I did. And um, there was no guard on the door or anything like that. In fact, I saw our road manager, uh, let's say, about three months ago. And we were talking to him and laughing about that story. I said, well, he said, I wasn't put on the door to guard you. I said, I know, I know, but isn't that a great story? Yeah. So, so I, I just had my hair cut. And um, so I walk out on stage that night. You know, Richie hadn't seen me all day. We never saw each other all day. It was always just showtime. That's when we all see it, saw each other. And uh, I would sort of come on last. You know, they're doing the intro to a song called Eyes of the World, the intro song. And I come, you know, running on. And he looks at me and he goes, flabbergasting and he disappeared he went behind the amps <laughs> he went behind the step and didn't come out and he played there all night and next day <laughs> we had uh richie called a meeting he said um you know i want to see everybody in my room we all went to his room in the holiday and somewhere and um we walk in and every so oh, what is it what's the matter you know he thought it's something really serious and he looks at me and he goes, it's Graham's hair. And everybody burst out laughing, you know, what? <laughs> you called a meeting about that, you know. And uh, C- Cozy just said, oh, you know, you can imagine what he said. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. And everybody else said, what, what about his hair, you know? Well, he had it cut. I thought he was being mean to me, you know. I, I thought he was insulting me by having his hair cut because I was saying his hair's too short. And he always did. He always said, well, yeah, it's a bit short, and, you know. And because everybody else in the band had longish hair. It wasn't long, long. It was longish. Uh, and so uh, that was the meeting. I just thought he was a complete fool. And uh, but Richie Blessing, he asked for that story, as I said. Every time I've seen that interview or another interview, it brings that up. And it's uh, it's magical. Because I didn't know what I did that day, but he's telling me what I did. You know, <laughs> it was guard on the door, and I what I went out the window, uh, and then what happened? You know, I'm waiting for something. You know, he hit by a car, but he still kept. <laughs> you know what I mean? He adds a little bit, but um, I think it's good just going out the window is uh, good enough because we're like seven fours up. You know, so you know, you go out the window. Of course, you were. You know, tying the bed sheets uh, together. Yeah, that's it. A fucking parachute, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, Richie, bless him. I know, I know. After that, you know, I know he loves me. I love him to be, you know. And uh, after that, everything calmed down at the head. Whatever, you know. <laughs> you, know. you know, have a fucking, you know, your head shaved. You know, it was okay after that. <laughs> Fantastic, love that story. And you mentioned in there that you love Richie and and he loves you. I mean. He's, he's got a reputation, obviously, as being one of the greatest guitarists of all time, but as well as being someone that can be difficult at times, that's probably a nice way of putting it. So so what was your memories of, of working with Richie? What, what's your relationship like with him? Well, if that was the most difficult thing I had, was a haircut. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Musically, no damn problem at all. You know, he was uh, always, uh, Brian, what do you think of this? You know, I, it always, when he and Roger worked together, you know, Rich would be playing his guitar. I remember one night um, he came in and he said to me, uh, do you know that Rolling Stones song? Um, oh, crap. No, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> um, uh, one second, I'll get in there. Out of Time. It's a song called Out of Baby, 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 you're out of time. He said, I've got this idea. You know, 
this idea is sort of like that, you know, da 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 da, because the melody is the same as a, as a, that song yeah. all night long. Because you thought you were a clever girl, nice. and, your da, da, da. and Chris Farlow did it. A guy called Chris Farlow, I think that was a hit record in England. I seem to remember. And he, said, he said, "You know, from this." I said, "Okay, well, I'll make up a melody around that," and that's what happened with that. You know, but we always got on pretty good. You know, uh, and that was uh, just one moment where he said, "He said, well, you, you can make something up of this." Roger will write the words. <laughs> you know, and. It's pretty much a, a complete rip off the melody ish, sort of. It's not exactly the same, but, but um, you know, I don't think uh, the Rolling Stones would mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that was a hit record again. We did very well with that song. But he was uh, always very open to me. And before every show, he would say, uh, hey, What time are you going to come down to my dressing room? I said, Well, what time are we on? Oh, we're on at eight. So we'll come down about, you know, 20 to eight. And I go down and I sit with him. I sit, and he said, uh, what can we do tonight to fuck everybody up? There's got to be something we could do to put, yeah. Uh, and I remember one night he said, what we should have after a cozy, a drum solo, we should come out with, uh, you know, cards, you know, seven out of 10, you know, all <laughs> like that, you know, just, just for a laugh. And that's what we did one night. That was one joke we played on cozy. Go, well, you know, we're all walking across the stage with these numbers, which is kind of kind of funny. You had to be there. I think. It, was, it was a funny moment. But little things like that we would uh, make up, you know, and uh, I can't remember some of the other things, but that's one I particularly remember because we all just went, yeah. we're walking across the stage. It was so funny because his drum solo is like epic. Yeah. I mean, just amazing, you know. So every night, oh, uh, nine out of ten, oh, I don't know, you don't take the nine, you, you take nine, you know. But bless his heart, he was, um, he could take a joke and he could take a joke, just like I can, I think. We all could. You can't be too serious in this. And I know everybody's like, oh, you know, you know snails, you know, the heavy metal thing, but it's not really like that. What we're doing is we're playing a different person when we go on stage. Yeah. We really are. Yeah. Two different people. Absolutely. Yeah. 